Hi everybody, it's Ricky Heller here from RickyHeller.com and I am back with Candida Corner, number three. We got to number three. So today I want to talk about a topic that's really time because right now it's just about summertime where I am and with summer comes travel and vacation and all those things and I've been getting a lot of questions from people who are asking me what can I eat when I'm traveling or Perhaps more importantly, how can I stay on my special diet while I'm traveling? Whether that special diet is a candida diet or whether it is gluten-free or egg-free, sugar-free, dairy-free, whatever it may be, how can you stay within the boundaries of your special diet and not veer off of it because of all the options around you and all the different people and so on? So I want to talk about today, it's a huge topic and I'm going to split it up into several parts, but today we're going to talk about breakfasts on the go or breakfast traveling and what can you do with that to make your breakfast fit within the special diet. So those of you who've been reading my blog for a while or if you follow me on Instagram where I post pretty much my breakfast every single day, you know that I love breakfast. It is my favorite meal and pancakes are probably my favorite breakfast. But so I think breakfast is really, really important. I actually subscribe to that adage that breakfast is the most important meal of the day, not only because you want to keep your blood sugar stable in the morning, but because it energizes you for the rest of the day and it sets the tone for your meals thereafter. So I want to look at how we can have a really healthy breakfast, even if you're in a hotel room or even if you're camping or whatever it may be. I'm going to start with a little story. And um, those of you who've done my Candida Kickstart course, or if you've coached with me, you probably have heard this story, or you may have heard the story, but I'm going to tell it to you anyway, because I think it's a really good illustration. So a few years ago, my husband, who I call the HH on my blog, which stands for Human Honey, don't ask me why he doesn't want me to name his name on my blog or videos. I mean, I actually name him in my books, So, but he wants to retain his privacy online. So, okay, he's the HH. Anyway. The HH and I were going on holiday and we went to New York City. And the flight left, I think it was around 6.30 in the morning. So, or I'm sorry, we had to get to the airport at 6.30 in the morning and it was supposed to take off around 8.30. And so we were really rushed packing that before and I thought, okay, you know what, I'll just pick up something at the airport. And this was about a year after I'd been on the anti-candida diet for a while so I was allowed some fruit but not a lot and that was a, that was about the extent of the additions into my diet at that point so we got to the airport and I looked around the cafeteria and of course lo and behold there was nothing I could eat there were croissants there were donuts bagels all the things I couldn't eat and I found this one teeny tiny lone uh, fruit cup and it was a fruit cup that had I'd say 80 to 80 to 90 percent melon a little bit of orange and maybe two slices of apple well at the time the only one of those fruits I was allowed to eat was apple and I thought to myself am I going to spend $14 for two slices of apple no so I got myself a green tea and I thought you know what we'll be in New York by like 1130 in the morning I'll just zip out and get something I'll be fine so wouldn't you know of course we were delayed taking off so okay that was another hour or two then we got to New York and we were delayed landing. So I think it was somewhere around 1 p.m. when we finally touched ground in New York at, the, at LaGuardia. From that point, we had to, to find a taxi. And we, of course, we had to go through customs because we're in Canada. So we had to find a taxi, get our way to the hotel and check in and all that stuff. Anyway, by the time we finally went through all that, it was really, there was huge traffic that day. It took us like two hours to get to the airport. It was almost six o'clock by the time I got to my hotel room. And I have to tell you, I was faint with hunger, which does not happen to me that often, believe me. So I just did, I was beside myself and we went down to the restaurant and I had something, a salad, I don't even know what I had. But I vowed I would never do that to myself again. When I travel, I'm going to bring food that I can eat. So that's just to say, you should always have something with you that's within your dietary boundaries so that you are never stuck without something to eat. Okay, so I want to talk about um, how to pack and what to pack when you're having breakfast on the road. And I like to use the acronym PIN, P-I-N-N. -N. So PIN stands for portable, so whatever you bring should be portable. 
It should be instant or almost instant to prepare. It should be non-perishable so that it's obviously not going to go bad in your suitcase or if you don't have a fridge in the room. And it should be nutritious. And by nutritious, I mean it should incorporate all three macronutrients. So we're looking for fats, carbohydrates, proteins. Those are the three macronutrients it should have. And I would also add a fourth component, which is fiber. So you want your meal to have fat, protein, good carbs, complex carbs, and fiber, which is actually a carbohydrate. So if you have all those, that's going to keep you satisfied and it's going to keep you full enough and you'll be, you'll have your nutritional needs met. So that's a great way to start the day and can keep you going to lunchtime. So what are some of these things? And just, you know, just if you remember that acronym PIN, then you can think about the kinds of foods that will fit into that description and just pin that to your memory. So, okay, some of my favorites, and I will be adding links to these down below the video uh, for the recipes that I have uh, that I mentioned. So the first things I like to bring are kind of dry goods that you can pack and bring yourself. And that can be in a Ziploc bag or it can be wrapped in saran or it can be in little plastic containers. But things that are dry that you either eat as they are or you add liquid to later on. So two of my favorites are breakfast porridge. And there's a recipe on my site called Almost Instant Breakfast Porridge, which was created by my brilliant uh, colleague, Andrea Nakayama, along with one of her colleagues, Andrea Livingston, for a cleanse that they created. And they allowed me to publish this on my blog. So what it is basically is a combination of ground up nuts, seeds, coconut, I believe there's chia seeds in there. And what you do is you grind it up and it's, it looks almost like a powder. And then I can just package it in little Ziploc bags. Yeah, I can even pack them in my regular suitcase if I want to check that suitcase or if I don't. And then what you can do with those when you get to your hotel room in the morning is literally run some water through the coffee maker so it's warm or even if you have to, if you absolutely have to use tap water this warm and then stir it up it soaks up the liquid and it turns into the texture of porridge and it is delicious if you have some fresh fruit on hand you can add some berries or something but even if you don't a little bit of cinnamon in there it's really a delicious breakfast cereal that you can eat and I believe that there is a if you're in the US there's something called paleo on the go I think that's what it's called I'll double check and I'll add the link below as well for a cereal that is very very similar and the beauty of that, the reason I just love it, is because you can mix up your nuts and seeds. So if, you know, the original recipe has ground almonds and you don't like almonds, you can use walnuts, you can use pecans. Really, pretty much any combination of nuts and seeds is going to work in that. So that's a great option. And along the lines of nuts and seeds, option number two is to just mix up a really healthy trail mix that fits your dietary parameters. So for me, that would be some nuts, some seeds, maybe some coconut chips. And I would also probably add to that, and depending on what stage of the anti-candida diet I'm on, I would add my um, oven-dried cranberries. So those are like dried cranberries, but ones that you make yourself and are stevia-sweetened. Super easy to make so that you have this lovely dried fruit in your trail mix and you don't have to miss out. If you're at a slightly later stage of a candida diet, you could add goji berries or golden berries, for instance. Again, perfectly portable in a little Ziploc bag. You can even bring it during the day while you're walking around doing your touring as well as a snack. So that, that would make a good breakfast as well. Along those lines, I have um, one of my favorite things are breakfast cookies. And you can Google, there are lots of breakfast cookies on the internet. But the ones, of course, I like, of course, I like my own recipe the best. So I have a recipe called Detox Cookies that's in my uh, Living Candida Free Sampler ebook that's available on my blog. And what these are are cookies with many of those breakfast ingredients, but of course they're baked like a cookie. So you just wrap them up, bring them with you, really easy and portable, and those will last easily three to four days while you're traveling, and then you can just grab a couple for breakfast or again take them on the go with you. One final recipe that's similar to that that I'm going to mention is called coconut brittle. And it's kind of like a giant coconut seed nut cracker um, that you bake and then you break into pieces that are, that are kind of like a brittle. Not too sweet at all, 
again it's got the combination of the chia the coconut so it's got all your carbs your fiber your healthy fats proteins from the nuts and seeds and it's portable as well and in a real pinch what I'll do is I'll crumble it up and put it in a bowl and have it as cereal and I forgot to mention an important thing for uh, the porridge or this uh, coconut brittle cereal or any cold cereal that you want to bring with you um, if you get those individual packets of protein powder, protein shakes, things like Sun Warrior or just um, Nutribiotic, they sell single individual protein shakes. Vega, I know, has some too. Um, you can just add some of that powder with water to your bowl, and it's going to be kind of like a lovely flavored milk, but boosting your protein as well. So that, again, it's portable, it's instant. You can just add it to the cereal bowl, and you've got cereal. So that's a great addition as well. Okay, so we've got bowls and things like that. Some other options for you if you don't want that sort of semi-sweet or if for whatever reason you, you can't get it or you didn't have time to make it. A couple of the other things that you can do. The first thing I would do is head over to the closest health food store. So, um, you know, Whole Foods, Trader Joe's, if there's a local health food store. I was recently at a conference in Dallas and there was a store called Sprouts that I hadn't heard of before coming from Toronto, but it was a great health food store as well. So three of us just split a taxi and drove over to Sprouts. We all filled up our bags and brought them back to our hotel rooms and then we all had food for the next couple of breakfasts as well. So if you can get to a store close by, that's really, really great option too. And as an example, you know, kale chips, for instance, they can make a great breakfast when you are your options are limited and perhaps you can't find something else or there's nothing at a restaurant you can eat. Because if you think of it, kale chips obviously have kale in them, but the coating is often made of nuts and seeds that have been pulverized into a paste uh, with water added and then dehydrated or baked. So you've got some great complex carbs and all kinds of vitamins and minerals and fiber in your kale. But it's coated with your nuts or seeds, which are going to give you the protein and fat and healthy fat component. So, you know, um, half a bag of kale chips for breakfast on the go. If that's what you got, go for it. That could be a great breakfast. Hummus and carrots, if you can, if you have carrots. That's that. And, and apparently, um, we don't have them in Canada yet, but you can get little portable packs of hummus on the go as well that come with, I think, some kind of crackers. So again. That's, that's a great breakfast for when you're looking for something that's going to give you that protein, fat, carbs, and fiber. Let me think if there's anything that I've forgotten. Uh, if you're in a restaurant, try to think outside of the breakfast box. So, you know, some people, if you're looking for plant-based, as I am, a salad can make a great breakfast. It's going to give you all of those components as well. A hummus and a salad will give you. Um, a, a salad that has some nuts and seeds in it is going to give you enough of a nutritional boost to start your day so that you can go on and continue from there. Obviously, if you're not eating plant-based, there are lots of other breakfast options in restaurants too. But I wanted to focus on the things that you can bring with you and that you can have in your room. I think the most important thing to remember is that you're looking out for your health. So things that you're able to eat that are going to get your day started on the right foot and then you'll feel good, you'll feel healthy, you'll be able to go out and tour and visit while you're feeling really well and energized and having had a breakfast that fits within your dietary parameters. So I hope that was helpful. If you thought this, use, this video was useful, please do give it a thumbs up and don't forget to share it with your friends. And remember that you can subscribe at my YouTube channel, Ricky Heller, or at my blog, rickyheller.com. So thank you everybody so much. It's been great chatting with you. I hope you found this useful and I will talk to you next time on Candida Corner.